Hello again guys and welcome back to episode 2 of Redstoning with Steve and today we're going to be going through the concept of delay and delay is a really important concept in uh, many redstone circuits and I'm going to go over a few different circuits today that uh, rely on delay for their operation uh, namely the monostable circuit and along with it the pulse shortener and lengthener and clocks so let's get started so before we dive into it I'm going to go over some different terminology that I'm going to use in this video and how it relates back to redstone delay so basically uh, Minecraft runs on a Java engine and in all Java games you have ticks now basically a tick is a unit of game time a bit like a second is a sort of sort of unit of time in real time a tick is what runs Java engines so every tick a lot of things happen the game will randomly check a block to update it um, and stuff like that but what it means in redstone is basically two ticks is equal to one torch of delay and basically a torch delay is the time it takes for a redstone torch to turn off or on when it's powered or depowered and yeah basically redstone torch equals one torch delay which is kind of intuitive and most notably the repeater is adjustable one two three or four torch delay so we get a repeater here that's one torch delay two torch delay three torch delay and four torch delay and one more important thing to note is the real-time conversion for ticks and torches so um, in one second there is about 20 ticks so in one second there is roughly 10 torches so every 10 torch delay makes up about one second so if you want half a second delay one two three four and one which is five five times 0 0.1 is 0 0.5 which is half a second and yeah that's just kind of useful information if you ever want to use uh, redstone delay for real time now the first device we're going to be looking at today is the monostable circuit and in a lot of ways the monostable circuit is similar to the RS Norlatch. It, they both have two inputs but the way they differ is where their inputs are so on the RS Norlatch we have two external inputs whereas on the monostable circuit here we have one external input and one internal input. Now how does this differ the two circuits? Well, the RS null latch, if we are to click a button, you can see the opposite output will stay on forever until we click the other button. And the monostable circuit, however, if we click the button, the opposite output goes on, but then turns off after a predetermined amount of time. If we do it again, and we watch this torch, it goes off but comes back on after a predetermined amount of time and this is due to this which is the internal input we have this input here which switches the whole circuit just like a normal RS Norlatch as over there but this other internal input actually goes through the circuit cuts through it and then resets the RS Nor component and basically this is how a monostable circuit in essence works and a monostable circuit is very very flexible in what it does and it can be made it's very flexible because of this delay in this internal input and this can be used to create either a pulse shortener or a pulse extender which I'll go into now now what I have here is a typical pulse extender and you can see this circuit is very similar to the monostable circuit we have over here they're roughly the same shape except this one is a lot bigger and the only reason it's a lot bigger is because you need it to be big because of these repeaters and there's really no way to get around this um, so I'll show you how it works so we click the button we see our external uh, our output over there which is a piston rather than a torch now and you can see this stays on for a lot longer then the button press. So if we go, oh, and it's still on. 
until this finally resets it. So as before, we've got the RS NOR component right around the outside. So it goes right around here, turns on this torch, which turns on the uh, output, keeps this line on, as in RS NOR latch, but the only difference being that this line comes from this input as also, goes over here, over here, and then resets the RS NOR latch, essentially. So that's a typical pulse extender, and now I'm going to move on to the pulse shortener, which in a ways is a little more complex. Now the reason I say the pulse shortener, or pulse limiter if you like, is a bit more complex is because there's a couple more ways to make it as compared to the pulse lengthener over there. And pretty much that's because it's a little bit more flexible in what it does, and that's because you don't need the RS NOR latch component. You don't need for instance, if we had an RS NOR latch, we'd have another line coming out to here. And in this circuit, you, you just simply don't need it because the button press is too short to, read, to need an RS NOR latch. And it's actually quite simple if you look at this thing. We're going to click this button. This is going to turn off, turn off this, off this, and turn on this torch. But at the same time, the input's going to come from here, go to this repeater, and go to this block, turning it off again a short amount of time after this has turned it back on. So if we add those delays up, we've got one here, two here, one plus two, two torches, four torch delay here, so four, take away two, the difference is two torch delay, so that's this is going to be on for two torches, which is a lot shorter than a button press. And you can see both the outputs deactivated before the button deactivated. Now, this delay in here is very important. If we were to put it on one, it's just not going to work because we have two torch delay over the top, one here. So this is just got, not going to affect it at all. Nothing's going to happen. The two torch delay is the same effect because we have equal delay, so nothing is going to happen to the torch, the end torch overall. Um, but the three torch delay is where it gets a little bit interesting. Now, we have three minus two is one torch delay to this wire, but <coughs> excuse me, um, this torch here is actually too slow to register a one torch delay. However, it gets weird when you put a piston there, and you can see the very very short delay of here has actually caused the piston to pulse so fast. The sticky piston, should I say, to pulse so fast, it's actually left its block behind. And this is a very 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 important component in T flip flop. Uh, circuits, uh, compact T flip flop circuits, and I will explain them probably next episode. So we can do it again, and it'll pull it back, pull it back, and back to four, and you can see it has the same effect. Now this circuit here is very similar to this circuit here. They do exactly the same thing, except this one is a lot more flexible, and that's because you can orientate this piston to any direction you want this to be orientated to. You can go any of the six directions. Whereas with this circuit, you have to mess around a little bit more, little more with it, and it's a little more complicated. So this one's a lot more simpler to build. It's very simple, as you can see. And basically, how it works: we have the input here goes to one torch delay here, one, two torch delay here, two minus one. Difference is one torch, which is the pulse it will send through here, because the piston will retract the block one torch after this repeater powers. So that's where you get the pulse shortener effect from and it's very flexible because you can actually extend this and get a longer delay through here. So we have this, we have effectively a one torch delay which as we saw before will call, not cause this one to pulse but will cause the piston to pulse. As shown before, I just get the block back. But we can also extend this to be a much longer delay as shown before as well. So that's why it's so flexible, and the reason I'm showing you this is because it's one of my favourite circuits in all of Blue World. Um, probably my most used circuit apart from the RS NOR latch. And as I said before, it's very, very flexible. It's very easy to build, and if you go download my my world download in Blue World, a bit of lag, you go down, download the link in Blue World, you will find that this circuit is actually absolutely everywhere in the world. So 
go check it out if you want to have a closer look at it in action and now we'll move on to clocks now we're going back old school here guys this is a five clock with only redstone wire and redstone torches now the five clock back in its day was the preferred clock for pretty much everyone and that's because it's not the smallest clock you can make like I've got a three clock over there it's not the smallest one you can make but it provided a slow steady pulse to anything whereas the three clock was really too fast to be useful for anything so what a clock does so if you think about a clock in real life basically a clock goes around and around transfers or doesn't transfer but the hands just keep going round and around the redstone clock is quite similar in this regard it transfers a redstone signal round and around in a loop so if we have a logical look at this <coughs> excuse me um, I have taken out a redstone wire here so the clock isn't actually active so if we put a redstone wire here this will power it which will depower this torch which will power this torch which will depower this torch which will power this torch which will depower this torch which will power this torch so on and so forth it will pass the redstone signal infinitely around and around so I'll demonstrate it here and you can see it's passing the redstone signal around and around and why is a clock useful because it provides a steady pulse to any component you want to put in so if you want a door I don't know why you want a door or, or a note block. A note block is a much better example. If you have a note block here, it'll just keep going pulse, 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 and it's a nice steady note block pulse. Now I have the three clock here, and this is works exactly the same to the five clock, except it only has three redstone torches, hence three, five clock. And you can see this provides a much, much faster pulse. And you can see it is crazily pulsing there and usually this redstone pulse is too fast for really anything because we I'm not sure if you'd want a piston really pulsing that fast at all so that's pretty much it and I've got to mention repeaters in clocks and repeaters in clocks made them a lot more compact and a lot more efficient and that's because if we're to break this three clock say we want this to be a lot slower but we don't want to go to the lengths of making a big ugly five clock we put a couple of repeaters in here look how slow this is already and when it, we're only using three this is already slower than the five clock and we're only using three torches so it makes it a lot more redstone efficient a lot more compact and yeah a lot more useful overall so yeah that's pretty much clocks in a nutshell guys and yeah that's about it so that's about all for today guys, I'm trying to keep these episodes relatively short, just so they're a bit easier to watch, I don't really want them all to be 20 minutes like the first one, so I'm aiming for about 10 minutes on this video, I've probably gone a bit over that, but it's not really a big deal. Um, I have seen a lot of your suggestions guys, um, i got a few, and I just want to point out that uh, don't expect a suggestion to be in the next episode. I kind of know where I want to go with this. I, I don't want to feature, uh, like, next episode, I don't want to feature, like, I think it was mentioned to explain a 4-bit calculator. I don't really want to mention that in the third episode because I know it'll go way over people's heads. But I have a list on my computer, secret on my computer, and on that I will keep track of every single suggestion that is made on these videos and I will make a big effort to feature all of them at some stage in the series. Um, also you might have seen that I put signs on everything RS Norlatch compact version, RS Norlatch and the AND gate over here and I'll put signs on these in a sec. Um, that's because I'm releasing this world as a download. Every episode I'll release a new world download uh, so you guys can actually kind of get in and have a look at these circuits. So, apart from that guys, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next episode.